Hi there, and welcome to this video in which I'm going to be teaching you how to make these lovely floral appliques. Now this is actually part of a two-piece floral applique ensemble in which I'm actually going to be taking these appliques and embellishing a peplum blouse that I've made. So if you are interested in seeing how these appliques fit into the sewing project that I've designed, then go ahead, check out the description box down below where you can see all pertinent videos of this sewing series listed in chronological order so you can follow along if you so wish. Now I do want to mention that these are only part of the total applique scheme that I have lined up for this project. I also have leaves and vines, but I didn't include them in this video because I felt it would get too lengthy. So I'm going to cover the actual making of the vines and the leaves in two successive videos. But right now we're just going to be focusing on making the actual flower. Now a little overview of these flowers. As you can see, these two here are slightly different than this one, and this is the one I'm gonna be teaching you how to make. Uh, here, the only difference is there's an extra layer of fabric in these flowers because as I mentioned, it corresponds directly with my actual two-piece ensemble. This is from the skirt that I've made for the ensemble, so it just helps establish flow in the project. That's the only difference. You will see that there are three layers in the flower that we're going to be making, and they are hand-painted slash hand-dyed, and then in the center of the flower you can see that they're embellished with some crystals. Now I'm going to go ahead and describe to you the actual materials and tools you will need to actually make these pretty flowers. So in terms of supplies for these flowers, one of the primary things that you will need is, ta-da! basic muslin, all right? And this is an actual very heavyweight muslin that I've used for these flowers. This is what the three layers are comprised of. Now you can go ahead and use a lightweight muslin, whatever you so wish. It will affect the actual look of your flower. Obviously, if you use something that's a little more lightweight, your flower is gonna look a little more dainty and maybe slightly ruffly and fluffier. So that's all up to you. Then in terms of how we're going to actually put the color onto the flower, we're going to be using fabric markers. Now you can use dye or whatever is easiest for you, but I particularly like these markers. These are called tea juice markers, and I believe I got them from a company called Dharma Trading Company. I will put the link in the description bar down below. But what I like about these fabric markers is, if I open this up here, you'll see that it has a very rounded tip that's wide, it allows you to sort of just stipple the actual marker on the fabric. So it allows for some precision, but it's very good for blending, which is very handy for this project. So I quite like them. And I have them in orange, yellow, sky blue, blue, and pink. So that's what I had to work with. Then if you want to get a little more fancy with the actual look of your flowers, you can see how there's sort of striations in the flower, which I've actually sort of painted in a way. Now, typically you would probably want uh, some painter's tools for this project. I didn't have any, <laughs> so everything I have in terms of tools is a bit makeshift. So I actually have some baking tools right here that you usually would sculpt icing or what have you with. Um, so I actually took the sharp edges of the tools here and was able to get added dimension in my flowers and I will teach you how to do that. But having some brushes or maybe just a tool that has a sharp edge like a spatula might be handy for this project. And then obviously you want your embellishment for the center of your flower. As I mentioned, I use crystal beads. As you can see here, I have these Swarovski beads that I picked up off of artbeads.com and I like artbeads.com because they frequently have sales and these are three millimeters. Now that's a very small bead to be working with so you can obviously order larger beads if you want to do crystals, if you want a bolder effect, but they do get more expensive the bigger the crystal, right? So that's something to consider. The other thing is if you are going to be using particularly small beads, you'll more than likely need a special needle to actually fit through these beads. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. Here I have an English 
beading needle size 12, okay? And that should work beautifully for this project. Uh, it's very, very thin and tiny, and the eye of the needle is extraordinarily narrow and difficult to thread, but working with these small beads, it's something you will need if you decide to use the small beads. You'll also see that I have a bit of very clear transparent thread hanging out here. So if you happen to be using crystals to embellish the center of your flower, like I am, or glass beads really with sharp edges, you may want to actually use something called fireline beading thread, all right? And here I have it in the crystal color and it's sort of it's sort of similar to fishing line, a very lightweight form of fishing line. Now, if you were to use traditional thread, you just run the risk of the actual thread being cut by the glass edges of the crystals or the beads that you're using. If you don't think you're going to be getting a lot of wear and tear, perhaps on these appliques, then maybe you can just stick with traditional thread. But it's just something to consider in case you're worried about your actual beads cutting through your thread. You can do a Google search for this and it should pop up fire line beading thread. Um, I got mine off eBay and I got it in the four pound variety and it works great for this project. So this thread and the needle for the crystal embellishment might be something that you might want to purchase. So that's pretty much it in terms of materials other than things like you're gonna need your scissors to cut the fabric and obviously you'll want some thread to actually adhere the layers together and gather the flowers into that cup-like shape. So I actually, because I'm using heavyweight muslin, I'm using very heavy thread and a larger needle to do that. So that is also something to keep in mind if you happen to be using a very heavyweight fabric. So that's about it. Now we can begin the actual tutorial. I did forget to mention that you actually might want to protect your work surface as well. So I've gone ahead and laid down a layer of some saran wrap just so I don't get my kitchen counters all mucky and gucky. We're going to begin with an actual square of fabric. Now this is going to, the dimensions of the square are going to largely depend on what you're going for. I would say start with a very large square. We are going to be trimming this for our flowers, so it is going to get smaller. So what you wanna do, I would say, is start with the largest layer of your flower. So if you want a large flower, maybe you wanna start with something that's five, six inches, you know? Um, and because then we're going to actually build the flower and create successively smaller squares. So this one here is four inches by four inches. So maybe my next square of fabric that I will place on top of this is going to be three and a half by three and a half. And then the next one, maybe three by three. So something like that. Um, so this isn't going to wind up as being too big of a flower once I get done with it because as I mentioned we're going to trim this uh, square into a flower shape. So in order to do that we're going to do some fancy folding and you can create whatever flower shape you wish but this is just sort of a quick way to do it. So I'm just going to take the square and fold it in half corner to corner, diagonal fold, it doesn't have to be super precise at all. And then I'm just going to take one corner, one of those diagonal corners, and I'm going to fold it up like so. I feel like this is origami. <laughs> it's just going to extend that tip of the diagonal is going to extend just a bit past this main peak that we've created here. Okay. And then you're going to do the same thing with the other side. Try and line it up such that the edges are even over here and it'll kind of look like an arrowhead. <laughs> I don't know the best, the best description for that, a bit like an arrowhead. And then after you have that, you'll just fold it down the center like so, all right? And now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go on this end, this very jaggedy end, the arrowhead end, and you're going to actually cut a circular shape. All right, and then when you open it up, you have your little flower shape. So there is our first layer of our flower. And here we have the second layer of my flower. The square is measuring about three and a half inches by three and a half inches. And I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with my base layer. Let's 
going to cut the top off in a rounded manner. So here's our second layer of our flower that's going to go right on top of our first, like so. And you can really see how they fit nicely together. And here's my last layer of my flower, the smallest one, which is 3 inches by 3 inches. And opening it up, as you can see, I actually trimmed a good portion off because I want the difference in my top layer to be pretty dramatic versus my other layers. So I trimmed off a good portion on that edge. And voila, we have all the layers of our flower ready to be dyed. So now for actually coloring the flowers, what I like to do is work from lightest to darkest. So I take the center of my flower, right, the smallest, in dimension of my layers and that's usually where you know the bright burst of color happens so usually your yellows and your oranges but you can make your flowers look however you wish so what I essentially begin doing is just with these markers I just begin dabbing them on like so okay and you don't need to have a really regular pattern that's what's great about this and then as I mentioned for me because I don't have any brush tools or anything. Uh, I use my makeshift baking tools and while the, the, the marker is still wet, I'm able to actually take the marker out a bit like that. Okay? Then generally what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wait for that to dry. That can take a long time depending on how much you stippled on, right? So impatient Asia here, <laughs> I usually just start my next color. I'm going to go ahead and go in with some orange uh, because if these do end up bleeding together, it's a safe bet that actually the color is not going to look bad. It's going to be a nice transition actually. So what I like to do then is I actually like to go around the very edge of the flower and I like to put a deep border, okay, right on that edge. Like that, see, it can be pretty irregular. I think the more irregular you make this actually, the cooler it can become. I'm going to go ahead with my little tool here and I'm going to start pulling that marker a bit into the center of the flower. And what can also help is if actually you just take your tool, dip it in there. This actually would work really great if I had a brush, as I mentioned. So now that I have the center of my flower finished, I'm going to go to the second layer of my flower and I'm just going to continue the color scheme and I'm going to use that orange and actually start from the center and have it come out. All right, you can kind of just brush it, do whatever you wish. Now I'm just going to do what I did on the first flower and I have so much fabric marker that I placed in the center there that you can see how when I start sweeping it out from the center it really makes this pretty fan like shape. And now I'm going to complete the border in another color and I'm debating, I think I'll actually go for pink. Now this happens to be a pretty light pink, I wish it were a deeper pink, but we'll try and make it work. Let's see. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, once again, bring a lot of that fabric marker toward the interior of the flower. What I'm doing is taking the sharp end of my tool here. This is the one thing that I actually see, <laughs> maybe sharp sculpting tools being good for this, is because you can actually sort of remove some of that marker that you've laid down. I don't know if you can see this, but it literally pushes it aside and you can get these fine tip striations. 
right here. And I really think that contributes to the overall look of the flower when you look at it up close. And now we come to our base of the flower, the biggest layer of our flower. And I'm just gonna go ahead and continue because I did a pink border here. Once again, I'm gonna start at the center of my largest flower and continue that color scheme. And this time, as you can see, I'm really just making the entire flower pink. And now I've just done what I've been doing is taking my sharp edge tool and really inserting those fine tip striations. And now if you wanna add more dimension to your flowers, what you can do is wait for your first layer of dye to dry and then go back over and do some more detailing. So for instance, this is the center of my flower. I wanna actually fill it out a bit more like these two flowers. So now that I've amped up the intensity, especially on the center of my flower, you know, you can go back and really layer those fabric markers to build up the intensity, to build up the realism. And then what I would recommend is once every Everything dries. You'll see that I've done this already on the back side of the flower here. I've gone ahead and filled it in with some color and you'll probably want to do that on all layers of your flower just because once we actually gather the flower layers together they may pop up such that the reverse side is visible. So as I mentioned wait for the top side to dry and then maybe fill in a little color on the back side. So now that our flower layers are dry, you can go ahead and assemble them as you wish. And we're going to actually adhere them together with some thread. And at the same time, we're gonna gather the flower at its center so it creates that cup-like shape that you would see in nature. So what I've done here is I've just taken some rather thick thread and because I'm using a very heavyweight muslin fabric, I'm using a very heavy duty thread, which is actually buttonhole thread. <laughs> and it's thread that also happens to match the garment I'm making. So there's that. Um, but typically you would probably want to use thread that matches your flower. All right. So what I've done is I've just threaded my needle and I've left the end unknotted because I'm going to actually use that as a tail to gather. So I'm just leaving that there. And then I'm actually stitching a concentric ring right at the center. So just doing this, hopefully you'll be able to see. It doesn't have to be really accurate or anything at all. Especially if you're using very thick fabric, you don't want a lot of stitches there because it's going to be too tight to gather. Okay, so there we have that. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these two thread tails and I'm just gonna pull. Pull as hard as I can. Now I'm just gonna secure it by making a very tight knot at the back. Okay, so I've double knotted that back there, made it nice and secure. And then you can see from the front, see even though I had green thread, it's really not visible because we pulled it so taut, but it really creates that sort of floral shape. And you can sort of play with this and spread the flower out a bit. And then the last thing to do, obviously, just gonna snip these threads. So we're gonna end up sewing that down, so that's not gonna matter much what is back there. Now we come to the crystal embellishment phase. Yay, fun. So what you'll do is you'll thread your tiny little needle if you happen to be using tiny little beads with your thread or your fire line. And then you'll obviously knot the end of your thread right there. So now we're just gonna actually take this needle and if you are using the English size 12 needle, it is very delicate. So if you happen to be working your way through very thick muslin with it, be gentle with it, kind of maneuver it on through because it is a super delicate needle. So I'm just gonna go right up in the center between my stitching, just like that. You can see my needle coming up gonna pull that on through. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about five crystals on my needle. So there are my five crystals and I'm just gonna string them on down just like so. Okay and then I'm just gonna go right back down through the center of my flower very close to where I came up. And pull that on through and as you can see 
it creates a little loop of crystals, just like that. So I've knotted off my first crystal loop in the back, and then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to go right back up through the center. Now I'm gonna begin a new crystal loop using five crystal beads once again on my needle. So there are two crystal bead loops, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add a third right up through that center again and making a loop with my beads and going right back down. And there we have our embellished crystal center, twinkle twinkle. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and tie off the thread in the back and our flower will be complete. And of course you can make as many of these as big or as small as you want with as many crystals or as few crystals as you want and use them to embellish whatever you wish. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you soon for when I'll be teaching you how to make the leaves and vines to accompany these pretty little flowers. Bye bye